Thank you for having me at this workshop and welcome everybody. Today I'd like to talk about learning from imperfect RGBD scan data. So I'm particularly interested in how to capture 3D um, representations of these real world environments that we live in that are spatially 3D um, from commodity sensor kind of input. And so we can foresee applications to things like robotic navigation, exploration, even interactions, um, as well as things like constructing virtual interactions for virtual objects with real world environments. And so why um, RGBD scans? They're a pretty promising a way to be able to actually estimate geometric observations of real world environments. We have sensors like the Microsoft Connect, um, which allows us to capture um, both color and depth frames. So here we have an example color video sequence and depth video sequence being captured in, in real time by this particular sensor. And if we can estimate where all of these frames were taken, we can merge them all together into a unified 3D model for this particular scene being observed. So this we can see um, being done in real time, uh, allowing for somebody to go through and scan an environment here while the scene is dynamically updating and unoptimizing for all of the camera poses that have been observed. And so that you can see also in the geometric observations here that the um, entire scene is shifting slightly with this global observations, um, optimi optimizations. Um, and that lets us capture these kinds of 3D reconstructions, which then end up looking like this um, as, as a final output. So this is um, effectively capturing a lot of the, the global geometry of this environment, um, but it's still uh, missing a bit in terms of being able to fully understand really what's going on in this environment. So if we turn around the scene to a different camera view, you can see there, there's a couple of significant problems here. Um, one is that there's a lot of missing geometry um, and that's because of occlusions with objects blocking other objects, physical limitations of the sensors, um, lack of habit in, in people observing things near the floor. Um, and the result of that is that in, in practice, we, we're never getting uh, a complete geometric observation of real complex scenes because in the end you will still have um, certain occlusions like in this case the, the monitor is blocking the, the wall where the sensor cannot fit behind. Um, and, and that means uh, that if we want to be able to learn on this real data, we don't actually have supervision for complete geometry here. And, and of course, if we go beyond that, we want to be able to es estimate kind of um, and, and recognize objects um, and, and their semantic meaning in, in these scenes. So um, we want to be able to tackle these um, first challenges towards really understanding what, what's going on in the scene, estimating um, the complete geometry from these partial observations. Since that's somebody that that's something that that people can can also estimate fairly reliably um, based on uh, incomplete observations as well as understanding um, the the objects actually in, inside of the scene. So let's take a look at the geometry problem since this one, if we want to be able to train on real world scan data, which has very different characteristics from synthetic 3D models. Um, so we, we've got to construct a self-supervised formulation here. So here we have uh, an RGBD scan that's been constructed by a bunch of depth frames. And here you can see that in this target scan, it's incomplete. There are some holes in these kind of commonly occluded regions um, from the sensor. And so we don't have the information there, but we can construct a more incomplete version of the scan with similar kind of scanning characteristics by just removing a few of these depth frames and reconstructing the corresponding more incom incomplete scan. And now we can correlate together this uh, more incomplete to less incomplete um, scan geometry and construct a reconstruction task in this fashion. And what, what's also important to note here is because we know actually the camera poses from which um, these images were observed, we also know what's 
space uh, in 3D has been unobserved. And that's been marked here in, in orange, so we don't know here whether there is actually surface geometry or if it's empty space. And so we, we need to actually mask this out um, in, in any reconstruction loss when we formulate this self-supervision. So that um, allows us to construct um, the reconstruction task in this way where we then ignore any unobserved space and we can correlate these more incomplete to less incomplete scans. Now we want to generate this geometry and, and we want to be able to um, capture the reasonably high resolution in these kinds of large scale environments. So we also construct this uh, sparse generative neural network in order to be able to handle large scale 3D scenes um, at reasonably fine grained resolution here. This is two centimeter resolution where the input scan geometry is represented by a sparse truncated sign distance field. So um, we are only storing and, and um, considering uh, voxels that are within the truncation region of this distance field. So then we can apply sparse convolutions to operate only on these re regions. And um, But then we need to generate new geometry that we might not have seen actually in, in the input. And so we can do this with um, a very uh, coarse resolution dense prediction and then continually um, upsample and refine in, in a coarse defined hierarchy fashion. So basically the dense prediction can tell us where we should actually generate new geometry and, and then we can ignore the rest. Um, and that lets us generate actually um, sparse geometry predictions which can then be continually um, upsampled and refined to a final sparse truncated sign distance field representation as the output predicted geometry. And this one we train in a progressive fashion. So first predicting just the, the coarse level and then continually adding in the, the higher level um, hierarchy resolutions to, to get the final output here. So here you can see an example of an incomplete scan where we then predict the geometry and um, also in comparison to the corresponding target scan here, you can see we actually are able to estimate geometry in commonly occluded regions. So, so here you can see a similar kind of pattern across these scans that this loss formulation allows us to generalize across various different kind of partial observations of, of objects um, and learn to generate geometry in regions that are actually um, commonly unobserved in in a real world scanning scenario like these regions. And so that lets us generalize across the whole data set of scans in order to predict something that's actually um, potentially more complete than any single uh, scan that we have in the trained database. So we can also measure the geometric reconstruction on, on synthetic data here. Um, in terms of these unknown regions. And so this, this particular kind of sparse generative formulation um, is, is pretty effective in terms of reconstructing the unknown regions of, of the scene. And what's particularly interesting about this kind of self-supervised formulation is, is that it's, it's quite important here um, to maintain the specific type of self-supervision masking um, uh, as you can see here, basically, if, if we're not considering the fact that we have unobserved space in, in the target, um, then we learn to generate similar patterns of um, missing data in, in the actual um, estimated geometry that's in the second column here. You end up predicting um, regions with holes because this is what's being seen across many different target scans. So we can also take a look um, at the effect of the degree of target incompleteness um, for these uh, scans that are available for training. So here we have the um, blue representing um, all frames available being used as target supervision um, versus 50% of the frames for the more incomplete input. And then we can remove some frame observations to uh, simulate a more incomplete scenario, we have an orange 40% of the frames for, for input and 60% for target supervision. And then finally in green, 30% for the input and 50% for the target supervision. Um, and there's a bit of a performance drop here in terms of the, the reconstruction quality as you get more incomplete um, 
uh, target data that's being used, but it's fairly robust actually to, to the target incompleteness. If we can establish these patterns between something that is a more incomplete observation with a less incomplete observation, we can still um, effectively generate uh, geometry in these kinds of regions. So this allows us to really learn these kinds of um, geometric patterns across these, these reconstructions to come to uh, an estimate of the complete geometry from a partial observation. But what about something like color or potentially even um, materials, textures? These are all very fundamentally important uh, to a lot of different applications. Um, in understanding real world environments. So here we, we consider just colors for now. Um, and we have a similar kind of uh, problem setup where we have a partially uh, a partial RGBD scan now with colors. Um, and we want to estimate the complete color and geometry of that particular scene. So we can go back to this kind of um, self-supervised formulation here. But it turns out this doesn't actually work too well when you just add in the extra channels as input and output for um, color. Um, so here there are some other things to consider in that, um, especially in these kinds of environments, um, most of the geometry here is uh, structural elements like walls and floors and ceilings. And so you end up with a very easy tendency um, with a simple mass to reconstruction to end up producing wall floor and, and ceiling colors. So, but what we can do instead um, is try to take some inspiration from effective color generation in, in the image domain. And instead we can um, predict the 3D scene similar to before, um, but apply the supervision actually uh, as um, in from rendered views of these scenes. So this allows us to compare rendered views of our predicted scenes to originally captured um, uh, raw RGB images that uh, maintain their, their photorealistic uh, nature here. So we can actually um, also compare directly to complete data in the specific view. So each individual um, or raw image observation has a complete observation of color there. And that means that we can then apply things like um, adversarial losses, perceptual losses um, in, in this image domain in order to help guide the color. So this we can basically apply to both color and geometry. We, we then apply the supervision as um, reconstruction in the, the 2D domain comparing rendered um, uh, predictions of ours to the originally captured RGBD frames. So if we do this with um, an L1 reconstruction loss only, we end up with a similar kind of um, color averaging problems here where everything becomes kind of some kind of beige. Uh, and now we can apply an adversarial loss to the, the images. And so this helps, sorry, a perceptual loss. Um, and, and this helps to capture some, some more um, fine grain details in um, the, the color domain, especially here. So, but this, um, isn't quite fully capturing the full color spectrum, whereas uh, the adversarial loss here that we're applying now in, in the 2D domain um, helps to bring out this, this full color spectrum. Um, and when we combine them together, we can get a bit more detail, um, a bit stronger colors here, and, and that allows us to more effectively estimate the uh, colored reconstruction of these scenes. And, and so we can also measure this um, with respect to rendered images um, by, by an FID score. And, and this does improve uh, upon prior works that are estimating also some, some colors. Um, and, and you can see a visual comparison here that this helps to estimate more um, uh, sharper kind of color detail in, in the output reconstructions. So here you can see um, an example scene reconstruction. So that, that gets us to um, color and, and geometric reconstruction, but what about understanding objects? So, so here we have um, this notion of this, this task of um, 
semantic part completion, which is to, we want to go from an incomplete RGBD um, reconstruction to estimate the complete geometry of every object in that scene decomposed down also into its component parts, since um, a lot of applications like interactions um, are happening at the level of, of object parts as opposed to at the level of objects. And so what we can note here that's, that's interesting is that the um, observations of these objects are, are incomplete, but the um, uh, objects themselves should correspond to um, common kind of uh, semantic part decompositions where we say, well, this chair decomposes into semantic part types of chair back, chair legs, um, chair seat. Um, and, and these are properties that we can actually learn from synthetic data, since the synthetic data may not necessarily really look uh, completely geometrically like the, the real data, but we can leverage this intermediary representation to kind of bridge this gap. So this is what we do by predicting the um, semantic part structure and then estimating the geometry um, also guided by uh, semantic or geometric priors that are learned from synthetic data. So we basically cluster together parts of um, synthetic data that are commonly associated with these particular part, part labels. And um, these are these kinds of, of priors that we can generate um, that we can then use as a strong prior to say that we want to estimate something that is a, close to a linear combination of these particular part um, priors in, in terms of geometry. And so here you have uh, from an input scan, we detect um, objects with the state of the art um, object detector and in 3D. And then for every object, we can estimate its um, uh, part structure as basically a, the set of component parts where each of them are then being decoded as a combination of these priors with a small bit of refinement in order to predict the final part decomposition here. And so this enables um, a more coherent representation that we can then predict um, these part decompositions for, for all of the objects then in, in these scenes. And so um, geometrically, we can also evaluate the, the different kind of um, part decompositions here, which are, are also fairly effective compared to um, prior works that can tackle this kind of task. So now we're getting to some understanding of these um, 3D scans. And, and I just want to mention finally a couple of interesting future challenges. Um, one, of course, being that, well, 3D scans are, are a great um, way to estimate, of course, this um, geometry of real world scenes. But can we also estimate similar kinds of um, geometric understanding based on, on objects, complete geometry from image observations or perhaps video observations, um, and, and then enable potentially similar kinds of, of part-based decompositions to then enable um, analysis of object functions and, and interactions, um, since it is, of course, um, uh, not only a very common mode of data capture, but for, for people, it, we can also fairly easily perceive geometric structures and, and um, semantic parts from, from image observations. So with that, I'd like to conclude. Um,